Good morning. Um, my name is Panos Pascalis. Um, I am Senior Lead Legal Counsel at the Director General uh, Finan uh, Legal Services, uh, Financial Law of the European Central Bank. Um, I am currently uh, involved in the Digital Euro Project um, and uh, a, I would like to present uh, question answers to questions 6 and 21 of the HCCH uh, CBDC uh, project. Uh, or, that is uh, CBDCs are money or legal tender and CBDCs and data protection, um, obviously uh, with um, a focus on the digital euro for which we have a proposal for regulation being published by the European Commission uh, late last uh, summer. A caveat under uh, both the presentation and the questions, they are staff views and although we diligently reviewed them with um, management, they do not uh, express the views of the governing council and the executive board of the ECB and they do not bind uh, the bank in any way. Without further ado, uh, question number um, six, uh, that is the uh, legal tender um, uh, of CBDCs or the quality of money. Do they qualify as money, currency, legal tender, or as a distinct notion? And what are the distinct um, legal implications of such uh, state practice? Uh, also, what are the private law um, uh, implications? Is it an obligation? Is an obligation to pay with CBDCs the same as an obligation to, to pay with, uh, with money? Um, when private parties contract with CBDCs, what exactly is the object of the obligation? Um, whether one should distinguish between transactions between uh, involving CBDCs and transactions uh, with CBDCs, uh, and of course, what happens in the absence um, of a, a contract. Last but not least, uh, whether states would need to adapt a legal framework prior to the adoption of standards or coordinated guidance on uh, CBDCs. Um, now, uh, at least with regards to the digital euro, the proposal for regulation is clear, it shall have legal tender status. Legal st tender status means mandatory acceptance, which means uh, default use as a, a means of payment in the absence of a contractual obligation or a contractual uh, agreement to use another means of payment. Uh, at full face uh, value without hidden surcharges uh, or, or explicit surcharges for that matter, and with the power to discharge from a payment obligation. That uh, is important for the categorization of uh, uh, use of CBDCs as means of payment and of uh, contracts uh, where the CBDC itself is the uh, object of the uh, contract. Um, first of all, um, uh, is an obligation to pay with CBDCs the same as an obligation to pay with money? At least with regards to the digital euro, it would appear that it amounts to the same. You can see Article 12 of the proposal, the digital euro shall be convertible with euro banknotes and coins and par. And of course, um, payees of a monetary debt denominated in euro shall accept payments in digital euro according to the provisions of um, the regulation. Uh, is such an obligation satisfied with payments with the CBDCs of another state or jurisdiction? Well, whether payment with the CBDC of another state or jurisdiction would satisfy that obligation would depend on the legal characterization of such CBDC in the issuing state or jurisdiction, um, lex monete, in such case. Uh, when private parties are contracting uh, with CBDCs, what are they contracting for? And is the contract performed as if it were made for a monetary payment? As regards contracts stipulating payment in the digital euro, which, as I mentioned before, has legal tender, the answer is obvious. The parties are indeed contracting a monetary payment obligation. Uh, and that brings uh, me to uh, the next sub-question, whether there is a distinction between transactions involving CBDCs as opposed to transactions with CBDCs as the subject of the contract. Indeed, up to now, we were only covering the former. Uh, so in the former case, there is a transaction where the CBDC is used as a means of payment, having legal tender and mandatory acceptance. In the latter case, uh, it is a commodity. What are the default uh, private international rules relating to CBDCs in the absence of a contract? Now, normally, CBDCs are used to discharge payment obligation arising from a contract. 
uh, even an implicit one would do. There are some rare occasions where this is not the case. For example, a payment of an administrative fine, a judicial penalty, etc. Uh, or uh, when the parties to a contract have a different understanding on the acceptance of the CBDC uh, as opposed to cash. Uh, in such case, um, uh, we would forward that the, the Lex Monete would dictate whether payment in CBDC would be mandatorily acceptable, would be feasible, or would be outright uh, prohibited. Um, last, uh, lastly, um, would uh, member states need to adapt the legal framework prior to the adoptions of standards of coordinated guidance of CBDCs? It would definitely uh, help. Within the realm of the euro area, and as regards the digital euro, uh, we do have a discussion on the legal nature, of course, of, of the digital euro. Um, the proposal offers a few elements of clarification. It is a liability of the issuing central bank without a contract between the issuing central banks and the user. And of course, it is bankruptcy uh, remote um, uh, with regards to the insolvency of a payment service provider, a credit institution, or a payment, serve, a payment uh, institution, or any money institution that facilitates access of a citizen to the digital euro. Um, legal status would be a thing to consider prior to the adoptions of such standards. Another one would be contractual freedom and its role. You know, uh, to what extent can parties accept or refuse a contract with CBDC? limitations of contractual capacity for contracting with CBDC, the possibility and modality of use as collateral, which goes hand in hand with the legal status of the CBDC, and how it is treated uh, in case of inheritance, in case of succession. Um, again, uh, to uh, recapitulate, an obligation to pay with CBDC is the same as an obligation to pay with money, but this does not apply to payments with the CBDC of another state or jurisdiction. Then we need to go to the Lex Monete of that CBDC. Contracts to pay are different from contracts uh, where CBDC is a commodity, is a subject. And uh, let us now move to question uh, 21, which is the uh, issues related to data protection. Uh, in the circulation and use of CBDCs, what is the law applicable to the protection of personal data, data privacy, and the transfer of, of data? Um, very schematically, this is what happens, or this is what will happen in the EU with regards to the digital euro. Um, in the proposal, there is a very concrete uh, set of articles that deal with um, the um, possibility uh, of data processing by payment service providers, the euro system and providers of support services, arbitration, fraud detection, etc. In all cases, there are uh, legal grounds uh, for processing of a particular amount of data, and then there are precise data flows on, on which uh, processing can happen from any of these actors. And then you have the generic um, uh, regime for uh, data processing, which is the, the GDPR, uh, on, on which I would like to, to stand um, a, a bit more. Um, can and should existing rules on data protection apply to CBDCs? Can and should considerations or, of rules on applicable data protection be included in the scope of the CBDCs project? Uh, on the first uh, question, Yes, data protection does apply to CBDCs. Uh, this is obvious from the provisions of chapter eight of the digital euro proposal I referred to before. Um, also, with regards to the EU, um, the general data protection regulation would apply. Um, and I would like to uh, pause for a while to article three of such uh, of the GDPR on the territorial scope. So uh, the territorial scope is as follows. In the context of activities of an establishment of a controller or processor in the union, regardless of whether the processing takes place in the union or not. Also, processing of personal data of data subjects who are in the union by a controller or processor not established in the union, provided that the processing activities relate to the offering of goods and services, irrespective again of whether a payment of the data subject is required, 
and the monitoring of behavior as far as this behavior takes place within the union. This is the targeting test, uh, which has been already deployed by the European Court of Justice in such landmark cases as Google versus Spain. Also, uh, the GDPR would apply by a controller not established in the union, so you do have a foreign element, but in a place where member state law applies by virtue of the public international um, law. This is embassies, representative offices, etc. Um, a, a minor category uh, there only for the sake of completeness. The cumulative application of multiple data protection regimes applying to the same data processing activity can therefore not be excluded merely by provisions of private international law, precisely uh, because um, there might be cases where both uh, jurisdictions or, or, or both areas um, have uh, data protection law that recognizes the targeting uh, test. What data requires protection? Data used in the design of CBDCs, data generated by the way CBDCs is used. At least in the EU context, what is very important is to define what is the object of data protection legislation, and that is personal data. Now, the GDPR defines those as any information related to an identified or identifiable natural person, data subject. And uh, it specifies further, an identifiable natural person is one which can be identified directly or indirectly, um, <clears throat> in particular by reference to an identifier such as a name, an identification number, location data, an online identifier, or one or more factors specific to the physical, physiological, genetic, mental, economic, cultural, or social identity of that natural person. And that means that in, in the case of a payment, uh, there are many uh, um, the instances of personal data being generated, who the payer is, what the pay, who the payee is, what the payer is paying for, so what are the goods or services that are being purchased, where is the um, uh, payment taking place, in case you have payment at the point of sale uh, and geolocalization, also, uh, you know, how exactly are they paying, uh, how much money uh, do they have, because there needs to be, a check needs to be made on whether the money is available or not, um, and uh, of course, uh, identifiers uh, such as uh, IBAN or other identifiers uh, pertaining to the digital uh, current CBDC uh, transaction. So yes, mostly data generated by the way the CBDC is used. Which parties require protection? Users and holders, consumers generally, is there a weaker party? at least with regards to the um, EU context where the GDPR applies, data subjects are the, um, uh, of the subjects of um, uh, protection. So we are not going to examine um, who, whether they are a user, whether they're a holder, whether they do have the um, uh, capacity or the quality of consumer, whether they are the weaker party or not, to the extent uh, a, the data of a, a living and identifiable natural person are being processed, such person is a data subject and uh, such person is uh, afforded protection under the GDPR. Um, and, and that is the difference between um, data protection legislation uh, and uh, consumer protection uh, legislation, uh, which normally are two different uh, areas of law. Of course, in essence, uh, given that we are speaking about retail CBDCs and uh, given that most of the users and, and holders um, are indeed natural persons acting uh, as consumers, the two um, uh, capacities would coincide. But what is important is that for data protection purposes, you need to have processing of data of a natural living person that is thereby rendered identifiable. Where data protection is outsourced to third party contractors, especially across borders, what considerations relating to the law applicable to data protection um, exists? Uh, basically, um, in uh, cases of outsourcing of um, uh, personal uh, data, uh, it doesn't necessarily um, um, 
matter uh, because um, in, in, in such case, the um, on the one hand, the uh, controller, the one that outsources, uh, cannot through the use of outsourcing alone um, abandon their obligations under the GDPR. And also a second natural uh, or legal person, the processor, the outsourcee is created, which has more or less exactly the same obligations uh, under the data protection legislation as the, the controller and is accountable to the controller on how it processes uh, personal data. Uh, as regards international data transfers, as a general rule, the GDPR requires an adequacy decision of the data protection regime of the receiving country with that of the European uh, Union. So um, uh, regardless of any private international uh, law potentially applying, um, without an adequacy decision uh, for the European Union and for the GDPR, such a uh, transfer um, with a, a in a jurisdiction of data in a jurisdiction without an adequacy regime would prima facie be a data breach. Uh, and with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.